welcome. My name is Greg Whitsitt. And I'm Amy. And this is uh, Global Mission Center for East Asian Religions. And we have a seminar here, Winning Hearts, Making Disciples in East Asia. And we've been following and just looking at the challenge of reaching Buddhists and also, well, how do we work better to share our love for Christ with mm -hmm. them and that He is real and cares about them. What are we going to look at today? Today we're going to be talking about how to present the gospel. Mm. How do we share the gospel in a way that our East Asian friends will actually understand and appreciate? Okay. We, we talked before that when we share John 3.16, it's like, oh, there's some confusion, right? So now we need to deal with that issue. But before we go too far, let's just review a little bit. What was the first step of making disciples that we discussed? Okay, winning trust for the folk, for the hope that they trust us, right? That we create that relationship of trust that we can then introduce new things. Then we just talked about in the last episode, hosting an encounter that leads them to faith that God cares for them. Now I'll tell you the truth. A lot of times people feel that if you, once you've achieved this point, that we've made disciples, we're done. The problem is, is that we're not. Because I have seen many people who have an experience with God. I, I was visiting a lady who had uh, a problem with de demon possession and demonization in her life. And God had helped her many, many times. But she was not willing to become a disciple of Christ. Mm -hmm. Sadly, but true. So just because God works in the life doesn't mean that the life is changed. Something else is needed. And so that's what we want to talk about now. And our friend that we talked about, um, Pam, um, she still is needing more discipleship. We moved away and her disciple, discipling walk with someone uh, came to an end. And so while we continue to pray for her, there's still more work to be done. The next step is that we want to present the gospel. They need to understand that. Um, yeah, and when we talk about presenting the gospel, really what we're looking for is repentance. But what is repentance? Hmm. Repentance is simply, I'm walking in this direction and I'm repenting of this direction and I'm turning around. And so what we're looking for is actually a turning around in their life, a spiritual turning around. So we're looking for them to actually say, you know what, Jesus' way is better than the way I'm following right now and I want to follow His way. They may or may not know what that means. But they're making the decision, I want to at least learn what it means to follow Jesus' way. Okay. So the first thing, of course, that we need to do is be praying daily for our disciples. We, we want to keep emphasizing this, um, as we saw with the, the story of Joshua, that it's divine aid that comes from prayer, combined with our physical work, the things that we are doing that will bring success. And so we must be praying all the time. And the other thing is that we have to make our presentation. If we're going to, remember we talked about how there's different sport themes in different cultures or religions. And we, we notice that there are some similarities that we could look at between golf and Buddhism. And so we need to learn how to share the gospel through golfing terms, even though it's a very different sport. But there's another side to this too. And that has to do with this lovely woman and her child. You know, um, maybe some of you have children. We have two teenage boys. And um, the older one is about two and a half years older than the younger boy. So when Amy was pregnant, you know, you have to introduce to your son or daughter that they're going to have a little bo brother, a little sister. So we talked to Tyler and we said, you know, we want to tell you some happy news. God has done something wonderful. And we have a, a baby in mommy's tummy that will soon be your little brother or sister. He's like, oh, wow. And so immediately he had questions. How did it get there? Now that's an interesting question, isn't it? How would you answer that question? He was two and a half. Yeah, he was two and a <laughs> half. And so we could get into anatomy and physiology and how things work. but. Or we could say, you know, just some funny story about a birdie that flies along a stork and brings the ring. But both of those just don't work, right? It wouldn't be appropriate at where the two and a half year old is to one, mislead them with a funny story or to get into too much detail at this point. And so we just simply said, God put the baby there. It's his miracle. Oh, okay. And that was enough. But as children grow, their questions change right mm -hmm. and the information they need changes as well and so we find that that is the principle 
of how we share the gospel. Just as in sex education, you need to be age appropriate. So in sharing the gospel, you need to understand where they're at in their discipleship to also make that communication appropriate. That's right, because after somebody has the personal encounter, their natural question is, all right, who is this God? I need to know who he is. I need to know what he's all about. But we have to remember that they are spiritual infants. They're spiritual newborns. They're not ready for the whole of this. Mm. They're ready for part of it. They need part of it. And that's what we're going to talk about. We have found that starting with creation is not always the best place to start. And there are many different types of people. And so there may be exceptions to what we're suggesting. But we have found it is kind of just um, true across, just generally true, is that we need to start by answering the question who Jesus is. So start with him. And we like to do that in four parts. That's right. The first part, we just want to tell modern testimonies of how Jesus is helping. One of those ways you can share is with our glow tract. Right. Um, Jesus can help. Our glow tract stories of people who have had personal encounters with God and what he has done with them. So sharing stories like this will help. Yeah, so you want to continue doing that all throughout your relationship with them. The second one is we want to then introduce them to the miracles of Jesus when he was on earth. So we would just briefly say, well, we believe that Jesus was our maker, but humans forgot him and rebelled, and he came into this world to draw us back to him. Just a simple statement. And then focus more on several stories. We like these stories. He healed a man born blind from birth in Luke 18. Why do we like that story? Well, because this, the disciples asked Jesus, what was the cause of the blindness? Was it this man's sin or his parents' sin? It's a karma question. And so we just like to show that God is bringing blessing. It doesn't matter what the cause was. The point is God wants to bring healing. Second of all, and we can build on teaching about karma later as we progress in their discipleship. The second one is when Jesus calmed the stormy sea, showing that Jesus has power over even the natural world. Then in Mark 5, that Jesus uh, freed the man possessed by evil spirits. They may be able to relate to that if that was their experience, but at least we want to make them aware that God has power over the spirits. Also in Mark 5 is the woman who comes to Jesus with bleeding and she's looking for healing. A lot of Asian cultures has an emphasis on shame and honor, and purity plays a big part of that. Mm -hmm. So we want to include a story talking about Jesus is not defiled by impure people. He brings healing and cleansing to those people. Mm -hmm. um, also in Luke chapter 7, we have two more stories. Jesus healed the captain's servant from a distance. He doesn't have to come and physically touch. You don't have to have a Christian come and physically pray for you. You can pray in your heart and talk to God, and he can help you. And the second one there is Jesus can also raise to life. And he did it by touching the, the coffin there, the funeral pier. And it did not, again, cause any defilement of Jesus because he is life and life flows from him. Um, and so these are stories that we like to share. Some cultures have an emphasis on purity, some do not. Um, but these are stories that also mm -hmm. indicate he has these powers as well. Then from that is part three, Jesus taught the way of righteousness. That's right. And as we looked at Buddhism a few segments ago, um, Buddhism actually has that, that strong moral teaching, how to be good. That's why a lot of Buddhists say, yeah, you know, your, your Christianity teaches you to be good. Buddhism teaches us to be good. The same, same, little differences. Well, we can, we can use that as a strength, that Christ did teach moral lessons. He right. wants us not to worry. Don't worry about what's happening. Don't just trust that I'll take care of you. In in Buddhism, there's a strong sense of just uh, um, being content, just being content. And that's what Jesus is saying: be content, trust that I will take care of you. Don't judge others. Take care of your own faults. Few people find the way of life. Sin is more than your actions. Sin actually starts in your heart. Let me just emphasize that section there on on few people find the way to life. This is talking about wide is the path, right? Right. But narrow is the way, you know, that, that, and the idea of a path or a way in Eastern religions is a big theme. That Buddha shows the middle way, mm -hmm. right? The middle path. And so, so these are bridges. Jesus also has a way that he is teaching. Right, these are bridges we so can use. So when, we, when we're just quickly listing them here, we don't have time to go into great detail, but when we share these lessons with people, 
we are wanting to, not only choosing the right story is, is, is important, but also how you share that story. So you really need to know the people to know how to best um, mm -hmm. tell the story. That's right. Okay. Loving your enemies, um, the idea that the fruit is what identifies how good a tree is and that the truth shall set you free. Truth, we need to be emphasizing truth and we'll talk about that a little bit later. But we must be emphasizing that there is truth because in Buddhism sometimes there isn't necessarily truth. It's not as black and white as it is in Christianity. Of course they have their teachings That's and right. there's right and wrong and as far as what they would say is true or not true. But in the, pers in the experience of Buddhists there's not a big emphasis on that. It's more a pragmatic thing. What works is what they're interested in. We'll look at that again in a minute, like you said. Um, the fourth section that we like to tell about Jesus is that Jesus forgives and restores. But remember John 3.16. We were looking at that a few episodes ago. We saw how maybe there'd be some confusion with Jesus dying on the cross and experiencing this violent death that maybe this is somehow some background karma that has brought him to this tragic point. Um, so we don't spend a lot of time emphasizing the cross at this point. Remember, sex education, age appropriate education. At this point, we're not gonna get into that theme very strongly, but we do want to cover a few themes about forgiveness. The first one is Mary, the woman who was taken in adultery and confronted um, by those who felt that they were holy. But of course, they were complicit in her sin and how Jesus forgives her and says, tells her, go and sin no more. In Luke 19, we have the story of a corrupt tax collector, Zacchaeus, and how Jesus is forgiving, even though he deserved to be punished, even though he, he himself made those decisions, God is wanting to restore and renew people. Um, then we have the coming judgment that we find in Matthew 12. Even every thought and word is going to be judged. In Matthew 25, though, we see the judgment over the kinds of people. The sheep and the goats are separated. Those who were loving and those who are not, right? We see that. And if you've done it to the least, if you've done it to the least of these, my brethren, you've done it unto me, Jesus says. So we see that Jesus taught that there would be a judgment that all people would have to make an account or come to an account. Then our focus is on the new earth. Do you remember why we said that was important? We're not focusing on heaven because in Buddhism there are many heavens, many, many. Um, over, I forget how many, there's 31 planes and I think uh, there's 21 heavens if I remember right. It's 26, 26 heavens. So they're confused about that and so but they know that nirvana is something that they're not prepared for. That that's, uh, that requires a certain level of development. And so when we talk about the new earth and how it ends the suffering like this that we have in the world, then that is convicting that Jesus is teaching truly a new way. And uh, is it also convicts them that maybe I have sin that he can help me with. Uh, Jesus forgives hatred of those who kill him. So we'll talk for just briefly that he did die. We won't get into the story too much, but that he forgave them. And then when he, but he was raised, he raised to life. And then he tells his disciples to go out and proclaim the news of that he will come back. He's preparing to come back. So this is just briefly how we talk about how Jesus forgives and restores. We have another glow track. We do. It's called A Better Future, and this is a glow track specifically about heaven. Uh, not heaven, sorry, the new earth. That yes, there is heaven, but after that, God will restore this earth, and it, it's addressing some of the issues and some of the ideas that will be more appealing to Buddhists. Mm. So again, you can find this on our website. It will be in multiple Asian languages. You can also download it or get it through Glow. <clears throat> Their website is glowonline.org, glowonline.org. And these are just two of uh, many that we hope to be creating, um, both directly but also in partnership with people in the field that are finding, oh, this works really well. Mm -hmm. So we'd love to get feedback too of what's working well and witnessing when you're out there working with people in East Asia that we can create these GLOW tracks. We're very happy for the partnership with the General Conference Publishing Department and also with GLOW. We'll skip this, but this is just reminding us about how heaven works, right? Because they have all these heavens and nirvana is actually outside of this. It's a, con it's a, it's a condition where suffering is no longer a part of the life experience. So when we present the gospel, we want to be praying. 
We want to communicate at the right level. We don't want to go too deep and too heavy. We want to tell about Jesus. And let me just mention here, we're telling, we're not studying. You see the little icon here, the little logo. It's a person speaking. There's no book that's in that little picture. We're not doing Bible studies. We're just gossiping about our experience with Christ and what we know about him. So this is something you do just as a friend. But the fourth step here is sharing how God is changing me, right? That's right. We all should have a testimony of what God is doing for me. And yes, a lot of us have testimonies from 20 years ago when God, you know, really touched me and that's when I really gave my life to Christ. But really, we should be doing a listening prayer every day. And through those listening prayers, we should be developing these testimonies that God is changing me and God is helping me. And so we've actually developed a little way that we can easily share our testimony with people. And it's a three-part testimony. The first part is before I met Jesus. What was my problem? What was I dealing with? Was I dealing with anger? Was I dealing with bitterness? Was I sick? Um, what was the problem that I had before I met Jesus? The second part is how I met Jesus. Maybe somebody introduced me, maybe if some kind of an encounter that I had with God, but somehow I met Jesus and how Jesus changed me. That when Jesus touched me, something changed. And so now I can share my new life with Jesus. Now that I have met Jesus, now that Jesus is helping me, my anger is gone. I don't have that heavy weight. I don't have this burden that I'm carrying around with me. But you notice that there's different size boxes here, and that's actually on purpose. We don't want to focus on our life before Jesus. That wasn't attractive. It should not be attractive. What should be attractive is my new life with Jesus. Jesus helped me, so Jesus can help you. That's our appeal. If Jesus can help me in my problems, I bet you he can help you in yours. Can I pray for you in that? Can I pray that God will give you an experience like this? It would be hard not to be in, interested. That's right. You know, it's also important to understand that a lot of times people feel like their life is okay. And in the process of meeting Jesus, they come to a fuller understanding that they have deeper issues than just the temporal ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe they have problems with people or problems at work or, or they have some illness or spirit problems or whatever it is, emptiness. But sometimes when they come to see Jesus and see the cross, they begin to get a better sense that they have a sin issue. And so sometimes that experience of meeting Jesus is good on the one hand, but on the other hand, it's revealing to them that they do have a burden that they didn't realize was quite so big. Mm -hmm. And so, but like Amy said, we want to show them what life can be like for them. And so that needs to be your testimony. What happened in your life? And some of you, how many of you come from a background where you weren't really a follower of Christ and you had a conversion and have become uh, a Seventh-day Adventist Christian or a Christian. Have anyone here or did you grow up in the church? Okay, a few of you. I grew up in the church and Amy did too. Where mm -hmm. we've, you know, our families have worked as pastors and, and or worked Elders. as a local head elder, you know, and this types of things. So we've been very involved in the church for several generations. Well, we haven't, but our parents, you know, we're the several generations <laughs> ourselves. So we're one generation, just be it clear. <laughs> so how do I share testimony if I don't have something powerful to say? Let me tell you, the most powerful testimony is the most recent testimony. Mm -hmm. Don't go back 20 years. Don't go back 10 years. Don't go back five years. Go back to this last month, this last week. Keep it fresh. I shared with you earlier about the story of how I'm learning to listen when I pray. In the last episode, we talked about that, right? That's a fresh testimony that inspires people to want to pray and have a connection with God. To know His voice and be able to respond to Him is powerful. So, yes, you may have a before Jesus, how I met Jesus and my new life with Him, but for you, maybe it just starts with a problem in your life, how Jesus changed you and then how this now is affecting your life today. So it doesn't have to be a big thing. It doesn't have to be the big moment you changed. It could be something more recent. The key here is that people need to understand that a problem is a key to the answer. If you go to a doctor 
and he has no clue why you're sick, how do you feel? <laughs> Find a new doctor, right? <laughs> But if some people, they go to doctor after doctor after doctor and they don't know what's wrong and they're just half sick from worry, never mind the disease, right? Knowing the problem helps us to know what our mission is. And frankly, I find that many Christians and many Adventists are afraid of showing their real side mm -hmm. to unbelievers. They want mm -hmm. to put on this exterior that shows that they have the truth that they have the answers and their, their life is all pulled together. But well, there's... Yeah. We're representing Jesus, who is perfect. Right. We want to be like Christ, who is perfect. But what we have to remember is that we are not Christ, though, right? That's right. He's the Savior. And what am I? I'm the sinner who's being saved. When you contract cancer, and God blesses you and the doctors are able to take care out that cancer out of your body. What do they say? What, how do they, Amy, you're a nurse. What do they say cancer is when it's been taken out of your body? What do they call it? Your that? cancer is in remission. They don't say you're cured? No. Why do they not say you're cured? Because it could come back. You don't know. Hmm. So right now your immune system is keeping it at bay. You're okay for now. Okay. And I think that's how it is with sin. We're sinners in remission, right? It's still there. The seed of sin is still here. When, when, when Christ comes in His glory, our bodies will be changed, right? But we still have this, this, this uh, experience in this world. Now, God wants to give us victory, and He has power to give us victory. But we also recognize that sometimes we fall. But thanks be to God that He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins when we confess, right? So that's the good news. There's another aspect to this too, and that is that if we are not willing to share our weaknesses, then we distance ourselves from people that we're trying to reach because they know that they're not perfect. They know that we're not perfect. Right. And so who are we trying to fool? We can't fool them. Right. But it distances us, and so they can't relate to us anymore. But if I'm willing to say, you know what? I struggle with anger too, but this is how God is helping me. Yeah. All of a sudden, I become real, and my experience is one that they can relate to. Yeah. Whereas if I never talk about my anger and just say, oh, you know, God can fix your anger for you if you pray to Him, there's this distance. Right. And they can't learn vicariously. They that's can't not learn discipleship, that's just telling. That's right. right. And, and Paul says that we should imitate Him. Have you ever struggled with that verse? Amy mentioned yes. it, I think, in the past, but why should I imitate Paul? I want to imitate Christ. Well, the point is, is we need to imitate Paul in surrendering to Christ and following him. So we want unbelievers to imitate us in surrendering ourselves and when we make a mistake to make wrongs right and then get back on track. That's right. Discipleship is a lot like apprenticeship. And with apprenticeship, you're not sitting in a classroom learning from a textbook. You're following the master. You're watching. You're seeing what he's doing. You're seeing how he deals with mistakes when he makes mistakes. Yeah. You're following the master and you're watching. So we need to be discipling in the same way. So the fifth one here is we need to invite people to follow Jesus, right? We need to make the appeal. Don't assume it. We need to ask for this. And there's several things that we can do. And Amy, mm -hmm. let's just take a look at these. Um, in John 20 is the story of Thomas. Um, with the story of Thomas, he didn't believe. I don't know that Jesus really came to life. I, I don't know about this. And Jesus, um, Jesus, blessed him by allowing him to see but then he said blessed are those who believe who have not seen hmm. and so we can encourage people and say we invite you even though you haven't seen god face to face he wants to bless you he wants to bless you if you will trust him the second one the father of the demonized boy and he cried out to god and, you know jesus said i i will help you if you have faith and he said i have faith but help my unbelief hmm. So people who are doubting, if they're not sure, they're, there's a blessing for them too. There's a and, promise and, and for them. And we want to invite them. It's okay if you don't believe everything, you're not sure. Ask God to make it clear. That's right. We, he's already made it clear to you in the last step that He is real and He cares for you. Now you need to ask Him to make it clear that He can save you and take care of those sins, that He can restore you. And it's okay to have questions, but ask God to show you that He can do it. Mm -hmm. Just like uh, this father, ask God, I believe, 
but help my unbelief. Sometimes we have to make a harder call. Following God is, is not always easy. It requires sacrifice. And just like the, the story of the rich young ruler, sometimes people are asked to give up things. And so we need to be willing to be in tune with the Holy Spirit and recognize that the Holy Spirit is prompting us to help our disciple give something up in their right. life. And in East Asia, this could be very common, especially when it comes to relationships. Some people are actually, uh, their allegiance encounter comes to play with family relationships. Right. You know, you can't be part of our family if you become Christian. That's serious, that's right. serious. Um, we can call them to worship Jesus too. And when Jesus touches us, we need to be, resp we need to be responding with thanks. Uh, the story of the leper who came back and thanked Jesus for his healing is a good story for that. And then finally, tell others. Share with your friends and your family how God is changing you. These are all appeals that we can make that are forms of following Jesus. They're steps, taking to, um, they're steps in following Jesus. And, and what we want to recommend is not that you just take one aspect and emphasize that, but that you need to show them the whole picture of what surrender looks like, what it means to follow Jesus. It does cost everyone something, not just some people, mm -hmm. right? Um, and we should all give thanks. So these are the different aspects of what repentance looks like. And so we want to invite people to this, to this experience in these different ways. So that's presenting the gospel. The goal is that they say, I choose to follow Jesus and his way. Do they fully understand sin? No. Do they fully understand everything in the Bible about how Jesus died on the cross and his substitution? No. But they're making a conscious choice that there's a deeper issue than their physical needs. There's a spiritual need and they want to learn how to follow him. That's the question. How do I, well, how do I become a follower? Well, we'd like to teach you and that's step four. Questions for this session. For those of you viewing at home, we invite you to go to our website, cr.globalmissioncenters.org. You can download the workbook that goes along with this presentation and work through the answers at home in your small group. Our three questions for today. Number one, what advantages or disadvantages do you see in beginning the, go the gospel story with Jesus instead of at creation? A lot of times we want to start at the beginning, in the beginning, introduce who God is, but we're suggesting maybe let's start with Jesus, who Jesus is. What do you see as being advantages and disadvantages to that approach? Number two, in our last session, you identified friends that had already had an encounter with God, those who had some kind of experience. Which stories from Jesus' life do you think might appeal to them most? So stories of healing, some of his teachings, maybe some of his parables. What do you think would relate to them that, or that they could relate to the most and appreciate? And number three, what is your testimony? Remember we talked about my problem, how Jesus helped me in my life now. What is your story? What is your testimony? How is Jesus changing you now? So I'd like you to take some time to work through these questions and then share your testimony with your partner. Testimonies are encouraging. I need testimonies too because I'm still growing. I'm still learning how to follow Jesus. Mm -hmm. So share your stories. Take time to pray with each other.